Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Ruben Kronick of Vineyard Time on Martha's Vineyard. And today I want to talk about the Omega Speedmaster. Most people, when they think of the Speedmaster, are thinking of the Omega Speedmaster Professional, the Moon Watch. And while the Moon Watch is a wonderful piece that has a lot of respect and appreciation throughout the collector's market for a whole variety of reasons, not the least of which that it went up into space, it is not the Speedmaster I want to talk about today. The Speedmaster I want to talk about today is the Omega Speedmaster 125. During the 1970s, Omega released a variety of Speedmasters concurrent with the Speedmaster Professional. While the traditional Omega Speedmaster Professional was a manual wind watch, in the 70s, Omega created a variety of manual and automatic Speedmasters. They created the Mark II, the Mark III, the Mark IV, and they created the Omega 125. The Omega 125 is one of my favorite Speedmasters, and it's one that gets undervalued and underappreciated in the collector's market quite a bit. So what makes it so unique and special for me? Well, the Speedmaster 125 was launched for the 125th anniversary of Omega in 1973. They only made 2,000 models of this very rare limited edition. Now, before I continue, some of you who know a little bit about the 125 maybe thinking, well, there's some contention about how many were actually made, and that's true. Some people believe, and there's some reason to believe, that more than 2,000 units were actually produced. I don't really want to get too deeply into that because to me it's still a very special and unusual model, regardless if more units were created than Omega initially represented. That said, it's interesting and special for a variety of reasons, not just that it was a limited edition for 1973. If you can continue looking at the 125 model, it has a lot of elements that make it very special to me as a collector. One of which is the design. The Omega 125 is a very interesting case design. It's a two-piece construction with an integrated bracelet, and it is oversized for its period. It's unique for me because it looks contemporary while still having some of the 1970s flair that I associate with this period of Omega, this period of Breitling and Hoyer, and I like that. I like that even today, it's a very wearable watch. Now, if you're one of those people that likes to change your straps, this watch isn't a great one for you because the bracelet is integrated, meaning that while it can be removed, you can't really easily put a strap on it. So you do have to enjoy the look as it is. However, I feel that the overall tool-like elements of the dial plus the stainless steel case and bracelet, give it a really nice functional and artistic look on the wrist. So what else makes this watch special? Well, the movement is something that makes this particular model very unique amongst all the other Speedmasters. The Omega Speedmaster 125 featured the first chronometer certified automatic chronograph movement. And that is a pretty impressive feat. It was an automatic movement that features a chronograph, a 24-hour hand, a date. From a complication standpoint, it's a very usable watch, and Omega, like the majority of the Speedmaster collection, designed the dial to be very tool-friendly, but also very legible and usable. And that's something that I like about it. It's both a usable watch, and artistically, it's a very interesting sense of design, from the case, to the dial, to the movement itself. So what else makes this watch unique? We have a pretty unique movement. We have a rather unique case design. We have a limited edition special series for the Omega 125. The other element that makes the 125 very unique for me as a collector is its price point. In the watch market, we're watching a lot of watches explode. The Omega Speedmaster Professional is one of those watches that costs a lot of money on the secondary market, particularly when you're looking the 60s and you're looking at the 70s, those watches have really gone up in value. But when you look at the Omega 125, you see a really good value point. You can often find them on Chrono 24 or eBay from anywhere from around $2,000 to about $6,000. That is a very interesting price point when you look at the quality and you look at the construction and the product that you're receiving at that price point, you get a very unique watch, one that not everyone has. So for me, the Omega 125 is a value price point, but it also has historic significance with a very interesting story behind it. 
If you haven't given it a look, I definitely think it's worth a look. If you've given it a look and you weren't so sure, I'd say give it a second look. It's one of the watches that I really, really enjoy. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you have any questions, feel free to post them below or ask us any additional questions. Most of our watches are available for sale locally on our shop on Martha's Vineyard. Thanks so much and thanks for tuning in.